Hey guys, Tech Rally here, and welcome to the third lesson of Zero to Solidity. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about struct types and mappings. Struct types are custom defined types that can group several variables together. The ballot contract example contains a struct called voter, and inside of voter contains four variables a uint of weight, a boolean of voted, an address of delegate, and a uint of vote. If you're familiar with JavaScript, a struct is very similar to an object which contains a key value pair. So let's go to the code and create an example. Similar to the previous lesson, I created a file already and called it three underscore types dot soul. You can call the file name whatever you want. I'm going to create a contract called program. And in the program, I'm going to define a struct. So here I'm going to say struct and give it a name of entry. Entry is the variable name of the struct. And in here, we're going to have three variables. We're going to have a string of name. We're going to also have a uint of weight and a uint of age. This contract represents a very simple program contract where users can enter this program. In terms of what the struct will look like, it's going to more or less look like this. And I'll just add the appropriate comments here. Here it's going to be an entry of maybe name Alex, weight 170, whoops, you can know how to spell weight, right? <laughs> and then age, you can say 28. Within the program contract, we have the ability to create an entry with these three variable characteristics. But how do we create an entry? Let's create a function. We'll call it function enter program with three parameters. First, the name, the weight, and the age. In here, we're gonna create a entry instance. So we're gonna start off with entry, memory, new entry equals entry, open parentheses, then curly brace. Name is entry name. Weight is entry weight. And lastly, let's do H equals entry H. Sweet. And then we could put a this is here. Oh, and then no trailing comma here. Oh, whoops. I put an equal sign here as well. So it's going to be giving me an error. Awesome. We have an error here where it says that we forgot to add public. So let's add a public at the end to make it a public function. Awesome. Since Solidity is a statically typed language, we can't forget to include the state types. In this case, we're including the entry type via struct. So the entry is very important here. The next thing we do is create a new variable name called new entry. And we set it equal to an entry with the open and curly braces and give it the specific characteristics of name, weight, and age based on the parameters that were given. This will create a new instance, but it actually doesn't do anything at the moment because we do not have a good way of saving this information. And if you're familiar from our previous lessons, we can create a array variable here called entry, an array public and call it entries. And in here we could say entries.push um, new entry. And then we'll have a record of all the entries as a list. But I want to step back a little bit and talk about one of the potential problems of having it this way. I know I slightly mentioned about gas in the previous lesson, and we'll go over it more in detail in the later lessons. But generally, looping over a list in a Solidity smart contract will cost a lot of money, especially when you're trying to find one single element in a list. It can be very costly. So let's go away from the array type here. And let's talk about mapping. I'm going to be reading off the Solidity documentation of what mappings are. Mapping types are declared as mapping 
key type to value type. Here, key type can be almost any type except for a mapping, a dynamically sized array, a contract, an enum, and a struct. A value type can be any type, including mappings. Mappings can be seen as a hash table, which are virtually initialized that every possible key exists and is mapped to a value whose byte representation is all zeros, a type's default value. That's where the similarity ends here though. The key data is not actually stored in the mapping, only it's Kekka 256 hash used to look up the value. Because of this, mappings do not have a length or a concept of a key or a value being set. Mappings are only allowed for state variables or as stored reference types in internal functions. Let's stop here and digest a little bit of the information. The main thing I want to talk about is that mapping is very similar to a array, but instead the main characteristics that I want to note is that mappings do not have length, so you can't actually loop over a mapping. Mappings are super important when you're trying to look up information based on a key. We're not going to go into too much detail about the difference between like a list and a mapping, but just know that at least in a Solidity smart contract, when you're just trying to find information and you need to keep a record of more than one instance of that information, it's probably better to store it as a mapping. This is going to save you a lot more gas and money when performing those operations. Let's look at an example of how a mapping can be structured. Going back to the program contract, under my commented code, I'm going to type the word mapping. And here I'll write address and the entry struct, make it public and give it a variable name called entries. If I had to show you what the structure would look like, it looks kind of something similar to this. Here we'll have address one and that will point to an entry struct where it contains a name, weight and age. We can also have another one with like address two and it contains an entry struct again. It has name, weight, and age. There's no restriction in terms of what the um, value of this mapping could be. So you could also create another mapping that does an address, but it just returns integers. And you could call this public numbers. I don't really know what the relevance behind this one would be, but essentially you can create something similar where it says address one pointed to a five, address two pointed to a 10, whatever. You could change these to strings and then this would be Alex, whatever is a string context. So I hope this explains a little bit and even the key value can be anything you want except the limitations that was imposed in the uh, documentation. So technically I could just write u int here and here now will just be like three and maybe like five and then it's a dynamic hash table where you can define your keys and your values. I'm going to erase this here and just leave it like this. So with this mapping called entries, we can save every entry that is created via enter program into our smart contract. So now that we have both variables of entries and new entries, how do we save this specific new entry information into our entries mapping? We can start off by saying entries of the message.sender equals to the new entry. So what just happened? Remember from our previous lesson that message is a global variable and message.sender is the account associated to whoever is calling this function. So in this case, it could just be account one, account two, account three. So every time a different account registers via our enter program function, we're gonna keep a record of all of our entries via a mapping. Let's go to our deploy and run transactions. We'll deploy this contract. And here we have enter program and entries. So here let's try to enter a program. I'll say Alex, a weight is 170. And here I'll put the age of 28 
and we'll enter the program. We entered the program with this account here. So what we can do now is copy this and type in the, or paste the address here. And now when we click on entries, you'll see that the struct of entry is displayed. Here we see the string name of Alex. We see the UN256 weight of 170 and the UN256 age of 28. Let's use a separate account here and register again with maybe a different one. So we'll say um, Danny weight is 150 and age is 34. Enter program. We'll take the address of the second account here, paste it here. And now we see that the name is Danny weight 150 and age of 34. So now within the program contract, we have two types, a struct and a mapping. The struct is used to group different variable types together. And in our mapping, we can group similar entities together to store information within our program contract. I hope the previous lesson and the lesson here together can give you the basic foundation of how you can create your smart contracts. We still have a lot more to go, but these are the basic types that are generally needed to really get your smart contract going. In the next lesson, we're going to be going over public, private, internal, and external function and variables. See you then.